Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing Kali Linux. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. My first impressions here are that it has a simple layout with the new default XFCE desktop environment. There's not much clutter on the screen, plenty of open space. Kali Linux just had an update release where they introduced their new default XFCE environment. And they've also introduced a new mode called Undercover, as well as many other things. This new mode, Undercover, helps disguise Kali as a Windows computer. This seems like an interesting concept if you want to go ahead and go unnoticed because you're using Kali Linux, but you don't want someone snooping and knowing that you actually are. So we'll make sure we check that feature out. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the Kali Linux concepts here and get a feel for what's all included in this operating system. Also, if you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, please make sure to take a moment and subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. So the first thing I've noticed is that you can actually put icons in the background, which is very much default to the XFCE environment. Some of the other environments, you can't really do that. Of course, you can highlight as well, so you can move multiple things around in the desktop environment. I really do like their logo here in the middle, as well as the blue color in the background. But one thing I always like to check out is what other wallpapers they have available. So if we just right click and then go through and click on the desktop settings, we can change that wallpaper around. This one seems pretty wild, as you can tell, but that really messes with my eyes. So I'm not going to keep that one. Let's keep exploring here and see what other options we have available. So I'm actually going to use this one here and kind of move the Kali dragon here to the right side. I think that looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. And with that change in wallpaper, now we have a little bit of a darker tone here in the background. And it kind of makes the taskbar pop a little bit more here on the top, at least in my opinion. So uh, the taskbar is here up at the top, like I mentioned. And on the far right hand side, you have the option of shutting down your computer, restarting, logging out, and suspending. Right next to that, you can lock out your computer if you need to. Then you have the computer battery life if you have a laptop let's say you'll have this icon here and it allows you to know how much charge you have left notifications for information such as updates if there are any then you have the volume icon which allows you to adjust the volume currently i'm muted as you can see then you have an ethernet network connection a wired connection is active now so that's why you see this icon you would also have a wi-fi icon if you're connected to wi-fi instead and then, of course, the time and date. If you click on it, you'll get a little bit of a calendar and it tells you the current date. On the left-hand side, it's hard to kind of see here. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to change back that wallpaper so we can see this a little better. So let's just make it a little brighter here. So now hopefully you can see a little bit of a difference here. But you can choose between multiple workspaces for your desktop if necessary as well as a nice recording feature. Kazam is a nice application that allows you to take a video or screenshot of your screen. Then you have the terminal emulator for supplying command line arguments to the system, as well as the root folder that you can simply have a shortcut to here if you click on. Then you can also minimize all the open windows and show the desktop. So this allows you to quickly get to the desktop here. And then on the far left hand side, we have the start menu icon where you can get to all these subcategories available for Kali Linux. Now, one thing I'm interested in and that we mentioned before is with this new update, we've uh, gotten the undercover mode. So let's go ahead and check out what that actually looks like. So if we type in undercover, so as soon as I started typing in under, you see that you have this Kali undercover mode. So if you click on that, what happens is it changes up the background as well as some of the icons here and uh, even creates a taskbar at the bottom and it really looks like Windows 10 here. This is very interesting. So if there's someone around and you don't want them knowing that you're using Kali Linux, I guess, you can always use that option. And now you're disguised, then you can go ahead and use options such as the terminal. So this uh, 
little command line terminal isn't really a command line terminal. It's actually a Linux terminal here where you can go ahead and still put your Linux commands into. Of course, you can tell that it's a little different and you see that the root user is actually logged in, but uh, to most people, they won't even recognize this. So uh, very interesting. Uh, I wonder what happens if you uh, click on this folder here and look at that. You even get uh, kind of some icons like you would expect in Windows as well as shortcuts here. Uh, very, yeah, very cool. Um, so in order to get back, what we would have to do is uh, start a terminal. And then if we do Kali dash undercover here, then we press enter, it will take us back to the Kali desktop environment here. As you can tell, we're back into it. They do have uh, a few more things released with this new update. So as we spoke about before, they have a new default desktop environment. I believe they switched over from GNOME up to uh, XFCE. And this is because they just wanted to remove some of the unnecessary things that come with the GNOME desktop environment and supply the users with something that is better for performance. So they've also supplied the new uh, JTK3 theme and that's available for both GNOME and XFCE. So you can go ahead and also supply your own tools to Kali now with public packaging. That's a pretty cool feature to have. I wonder what uh, the users are going to come up with and uh, submit to Kali. Uh, another really cool thing that they've done is added a PowerShell, which uh, maybe we can install here. What I'll do here is I'll make this terminal a little bigger. So let's just zoom in a little bit so you can see here what I'm doing. As you can see here, we're logged in as the root user, so that's why it's telling me root here and everything's in red. And with the clear terminal, I'm going to go ahead and try installing the PowerShell here just to kind of take a look and see what that looks like. So PowerShell is something native to Windows. Uh, I think if we just do apt install PowerShell, we should be able to download and install it and it looks like it will. So I'll let that go ahead here in the background and let's just go ahead and check out some of the other options here. If we hit the start menu in the top left corner, we do have a bunch of other options here. So um, it's really all based in subcategories. And as you can read here on the left hand side, there are plenty of different categories that you can choose from in order to test various security related things and just test for vulnerabilities that come with the use of programs as well as networks. So here you can see we have information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, database assets, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation tools, sniffing and snooping, post-exploitation, forensics, reporting tools, social engineering tools. So there's quite a few different categories here all with uh, multiple tools that you can use. So you can select any of these and look at all the various tools that you have available to you. So let's just go ahead and check out maybe the vulnerability analysis. So we have tools, fuzzing tools, voice over IP tools. Very interesting in what you can do with this distribution and all the extra tools that it comes with in order to test vulnerabilities. Other things that you have, of course, are to change up settings. And if you go down to the bottom, you have a few more other things like a multimedia player, an office, as well as a development environment. Uh, so it's interesting because it caters to uh, multitudes of people from everyday basic users to people who are developers or very advanced cybersecurity users who want to do a multitude of tests. So there's not much more to the start menu here. It, can, it tells you at the bottom who's currently logged in with this little dragon icon in the red background here. Uh, Root's currently logged in. There's a quick access to all your settings. You can log out as well as log out. At the top, you can search, which we did before. So that new tool that we tried using was called Kali Undercover. So as you're searching for stuff, it will pop up and start auto filling as well. So if I'm searching for terminal, you can see all the different types of terminals that are available. So let's go back to the terminal and try running a PowerShell from there now that we should have it. I assumed it was PowerShell, but I don't think so. I think it's actually PWSH. And here we go. Now we're actually running a PowerShell. So you can see it says that uh, there's a copyright from the Microsoft Corporation. 
and there's some docs available if you want to take a look at them. It tells you what version of PowerShell it's running. But now you can issue PowerShell commands just like you were on a Windows computer. So I went ahead and cleared the terminal in order to get out. I'm assuming you have to exit out. So we'll do just that. It's a pretty unique tool to go ahead and add in as a very easy install, as you could tell. So go ahead and uh, take a moment to like the video if you're in this far. It really does help me out. Some more information about Kali Linux. It is a Debian-based distribution and is offered by Offensive Security. With a focus in pen testing, forensics, and security, the main focus of Kali is to supply tools for users and developers to test their software and networks to find vulnerabilities before others can exploit them. It's a great distribution if you're interested in cybersecurity, and there's even classes out there that are offered based around using Kali Linux to detect exploits. It's really made a name for itself over the last few years, and it has continued to be one of the top distributions for security. They also have documentation for beginners as well as advanced members with examples that help you set up various scenarios that you can test using Kali. We'll go through a few more things here in the Kali Linux distribution. Let's just go ahead and check out their file manager just to get a look and feel for that. It's got a very dark uh, background here. It's great, not in transparent. The icons are a little fun. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gradient for the desktop. The other icons are just fine themselves too. We can right click and zoom in if we like to. And uh, it seems like you can zoom in pretty far. So if you need your icons very large to see them, you can always do that. Zoom out or put it back to normal size. Up at the top, you have the current folder that you're in or directory. On the left hand side, you can browse your network and set up various network devices. Then you also have a quick access to the root folder as well as desktop and the trash bin. Last thing it shows you, if you highlight over here, tells you how much space is free. So currently we're only using 32% uh, percent of the space. Um, you can also click the file system and see the root uh, folder here, which is a little confusing because here you have the root user. So there's actually a root user and then the root directory. Up at the top you have options like files so you can create multiple tabs if you want to and uh, create new windows, folders, documents, and other things as well as in the view zoom in and out like we did, change it back to the normal size which is a little smaller than where I had it. Other things to note is the view of the detailed list and the last one which is a compact list. You can see the differences here We'll go back to the uh, view as icons. Go helps you get to, again, a couple shortcuts here. Go forwards and backwards and open up a location. And then, of course, help gives you information about their file manager here. That's enough of looking at their file manager. So we're just going to exit out real quick. And if we right click, let's just go through this a little bit. So you can create launchers, URL links, create folders and documents if you'd like on their desktop here. Also, if you're in a location with the file manager, you can right click and open a terminal anywhere. That terminal will just be opened up in the current directory that you're located. So it's a nice little thing to keep in mind if you just want to traverse to a path with your file manager and then open it up in terminal. And then if you go to the very bottom, you get the option for applications. And these applications are the same exact subcategories that you would find in your start menu. So as you can tell, we went through most of these here, but it's just another way of getting to all of those subcategories and the tools that are located in those subcategories. Finally, a few other options that we have is the desktop settings. If you wanna change up what the desktop looks like, we looked at this at the beginning, but you have other things such as the menus and icons and how to set those up as uh, defaults. So it's a nice thing to check out right away and kind of fit your own style here. We'll exit out of here and close out. Last thing I just want to do is go through their settings. So there's multiple ways of reaching it. You have settings here or settings at the bottom here. So you can click that and search for any setting that you want up here in the top right. But um, the most important ones really display the power management, the mouse and touchpad, just whatever the user uses mostly here. So 
Uh, if I hit display, of course, I'll be able to change my resolution up, the refresh rate, and some other things in here. You have the advanced option as well if you need to go down that route. Going back into terminal, I like to take a look and see what kind of terminal they have supplied here. So we can see that uh, they have a very dark background. It seems to be a tiny bit transparent in the background. I can kind of see the text here in white. It says Cali, so you can kind of see through it. But uh, it's, it's very good as far as not being too transparent where you get a mesh of different colors from the background meshing in with your commands. As you type in commands, you can see that uh, they are white. So anything that you type in is white. So it shows up very well on this, on this dark gray background. You can also see that uh, folders are showing up in uh, blue or directories. Files seem to be turning up in white. There's also the option of clearly tabbing up here, which is a great thing to have. Not all terminals offer this option, but I really do like it when you can create multiple tabs. In the Actions field, you can go ahead and go between tabs and view previous tabs that you had, as well as split the terminal horizontally or vertically, as you can see here. I've split this one up in two here, but that doesn't stay across tabs, so you can uh, have one tab that has it split horizontally and then one that has it split uh, vertically and I said that backwards so as you can tell now I have uh, a vertical one and a horizontal one so you can do it in multiple places you just have to have uh, one side selected in order to do that set it up however you like it maybe you have multiple servers you're working on or you're programming and you need multiple views in terminal this is a great way to set them up. And it allows you to zoom in and out of a particular selected window in the terminal. So you can see that I just zoomed in more on this side than I did on the following two sides over here. So that's also something neat. So you can zoom in specifically on a section that you select. View allows you to go ahead and hide borders and go into full screen. Um, as you can tell here, if I hide the borders, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but it does save a little bit of space if you don't need the borders. Finally, if you want to make changes to the actual overall look, you can always go to the File Preferences option, and there's a slew of options that you can change for this terminal. So now that we've explored the terminal a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, give Kali Linux uh, some ratings here. Kali Linux seems to be going in and out of popularity, but is a strong contender for security testing. And it has been around for a few years now, so it gets a popularity rating of 7 out of 10. Kali Linux now offers a user-friendly and minimal desktop experience using the XFCE desktop environment that's suitable for a resource-intensive advanced users and beginners as well as offers a broad range of alternative desktop environments for their users. This gives the user plenty of choices to make and allows them to use whatever they're most comfortable with. I'll give it a user-friendliness rating of 8 out of 10. Kali Linux seems to be trying to remove the extra fluff out of their distribution to make the focus on performance and using their tools for security testing purposes. They're also based off of Debian and that helps them stay on the cutting edge of development. This distribution has focused more and more on optimizing performance, therefore it does get a performance rating of 8 out of 10. Kali Linux is based off of Debian and has been around for a few years, as mentioned before. The community seems to be very advanced, and they have plenty of specialty tools available and offer a nice blend of both help from their own community as well as they get the Debian community ported in since they are based out of Debian. And with that being said, that also allows them to stay at the cutting edge of development. This gives it a features rating of 8 out of 10. Finally, since it's really making a name for itself in the cybersecurity world and has a strong focus on a very specific subject, that subject being security, it has climbed in the ranks all while being a fairly new distribution. I'll give it a sustainability rating of 9 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 40 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of Kali Linux. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. 
Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.